This is The Project. And the heated debate on coal seam gas mining in Australia is getting bigger. A new documentary is calling on farmers around the country to take a stand and lock miners off their land. Coal seam gas. To miners, it's the clean, green energy source making them a bucket load of cash. But in a new documentary out today, farmers say it's toxic and destroying their land. Basically, it makes an entire area um, unlivable. You can't sell your produce, you can't sell your cattle, you can't sell your sheep, you can't sell your, your milk, because uh, it's contaminated. Coal seam gas is absolutely safe, and that's based upon the experience here in Australia over more than a dozen years. It's based on the science from the universities and also international experience that goes well beyond that. By now, you've probably heard of fracking, the controversial process used to extract coal seam gas. During fracking, a well is drilled deep into the ground. A mix of chemicals, sand and water are then pumped into the well at high speed to fracture the earth and release the gas. Activists say in the rush to make big bucks, not enough research has been done into the process to make sure it's safe. You live in the middle of a gas field, you are in a very unhealthy place. In 2010, the American documentary Gasland exposed the potential dangers of coal seam gas mining when it claimed gas had entered the drinking water. While that hasn't happened here, farmers are worried the water they feed their animals isn't safe. We can light our water bore. The government comes out with very sophisticated equipment and they say there's no gas in our water bore. The water deteriorated to the point where the stock would no longer drink it, where the frogs that had happily lived in the tank died. But the industry says there are always some naturally occurring gas emissions. There's no evidence that water is being contaminated by coal seam gas at all. Now, of course, we would always investigate any opportunities where that could be brought into question, but the clear scientific evidence is that's not the case. In Australia, landowners don't own the minerals under the ground. So if they don't agree to allow miners onto their land, they can wind up in court. Here's these big multinational mining corporations coming in using Australian police to bulldoze their way past Australian farmers to come onto their properties to trash it. But some farmers in New South Wales and Queensland, where the industry is biggest, have been fighting back. They've been locking their gates and refusing to allow the miners in. And while drilling hasn't started in Victoria yet, locals there are gearing up for a similar fight. We do not give permission to large multinational companies to come into our region onto our land and put at grave risk everything that is precious to us. 450 Gippsland residents recently gathered at the local sporting field to take a stand against coal seam gas. This is not a not in my backyard campaign because it's in everybody's backyard. Like farmers in other areas of the country, they vowed to lock their gates too. Lock the gate with a chain and a padlock if you need to. Because if you get together and lock your gates, then there is no industry, no government can take an entire state. It's a highly contentious issue. The, both sides make very strong arguments. But what I wonder about is the order in which things are being done. There isn't conclusive research. We need to know more about the effect this has on the land, but it feels like the mining's been allowed to go ahead before we actually find out what it's doing. Well, there's been interesting alliances. You've seen, you know, independents in the parliament joining up with environmentalists. Uh, interesting political alliances, but I don't know if uh, Minister Tony Burke has been uh, convinced because of his own views to have more investigations or because there's been political pressure, because mm. that's a pretty strong community outburst. Mm. It's very nice.